Okay, let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are joining us from today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day and joining us for this web webcast. My name is Octavia Shakut, and I'm your CA Community Manager for Agile Ops BU. Before we get started with today's session, I just want to let you know that if you are using the WebEx audio, you should use the Q&A box right in the WebEx to ask any question you have along the way. At the end of the presentation, we will try to address as many of them as we can. And I will also tell you how to unmute yourself so that you can ask some live questions. Over the phone, we have Brian Whitmarsh, who is US CA Product Manager for CA APM. Brian, whenever you are ready, you can take it away. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. And welcome, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Brian Whitmarsh, and uh, I get to talk to you about user experience today. This is something that's uh, very near and dear to my heart, and uh, I definitely um, love to evangelize the importance of uh, the user and the user experience, which um, in most cases is priority number one. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, uh, to emphasize uh, the fact that, you know, the user experience is everything, um, you know, just some, from some real life uh, experience, right? Um, when we run applications, um, and especially in the mobile or web experience world, uh, we know which applications are instantly intuitive, um, instantly add value, uh, and accomplish a goal that would be otherwise more difficult. Um, and then we also know uh, if that company that's providing the application, uh, you know, when we use them for more than, you know, one or two versions, uh, we understand if they uh, really are in tune to what we want to use the application for, um, and if they are actually monitoring the user experience. Now, some <laughs> some applications, uh, you wonder who in the world um, created them because you know it's very frustrating, very difficult uh, to to navigate and uh, to understand. You know, these don't come with user manuals, um, and so making sure that applications are very intuitive, very easy to use, and in the end, that you know our goal is to help customers. Uh, have their end users, their end customers have smiley faced users. Now, success, in order to do this properly, it, it depends on uh, a number of things. And one key component um, is organi what we call organizational alignment. Let me just build this slide out for you so it's not painless, pain, painful to build it out. But, uh, you know, we understand this. Uh, if we're working in uh, the enterprise today, uh, we have different business units uh, within our organization or different people with different roles. And a lot of times there's silos between them. And, you know, not physical silos, but there, there is lack of communication between the different units. And, you know, it's very popular to break up uh, these units into folks that worry about the infrastructure. You know, they're operations people. Uh, they care about uh, the performance of the infrastructure that applications are running on and so on. And then you have, you know, the application owners. You have the folks that are responsible uh, for the application itself uh, and the code and, you know, development. And a lot of times you have another break, which is um, the difference between application owners and the developers. Uh, and then you have the actual um, business owner, the, the buyer, the actual the folks that are doing the design, that are owning uh, the application from an experience perspective. And, and the problem here is that if we continue uh, to work in separate silos, uh, we're going to have a very difficult time uh, being successful. And when we go back to the first slide that I presented, you know, it's all about the user experience. Uh, in order to really bring these groups together, they need to have a common goal. Uh, now, a lot of us, you know, we have KPIs, key performance indicators for our jobs, and, you know, if we meet a certain criteria at the end of the year, we know we get our bonus. You know, that's great. Uh, what these organizations need is um, a unified key performance indicator 
And the nice thing is, especially in the digital world, it's very easy to, to monitor this, to, uh, to get user feedback, because people rate our application. They rate our user experience. Um, they have sentiment about our applications and about our company experience. And if we are able to align uh, the organization to the common goal of a great user experience, uh, then that's going to help companies be successful. We see here, you know, statistics by analysts that say, uh, you know, if we are completely separate in these silos, that is a very high likelihood that we are going to fail, that our initiatives to improve customer experience, to provide a great experience, uh, they're going to fail, you know, 70 to 70 to 80 percent of the time. So it's very important uh, for us to gain this um, in, this common goal and align these different uh, silos within our organization. Now let's talk about uh, traditionally what happens uh, today uh, when there is a problem uh, detected. Now all of these different business units they tend to have their own uh, their own tools and their own applications that they use. Sometimes, um, you know, we call, um, we call it shadow IT where, you know, yes, there is an IT organization and they try to unify us and try to make us use all the same applications. Uh, everybody likes to push back because they all have individual uh, needs and individual metrics that they want to track. And a lot of times, you know, one single tool just isn't enough for them. And so they go out and they buy all their own uh, tools and they kind of hide it from IT, and uh, they, you know, you end up with a very disparate system. And you, what the problem is, you end up with a lot of uncorrelated data. And I'll talk more about uh, correlation of data and the importance of that. But what happens here is, you know, we have, uh, for example, the the app owners, the business analysts, they'll have some type of marketing uh, analytics tool, you know, whether it's Google Analytics or Adobe Omniture, those types of tools. Um, IT operations, uh, they are, you know, monitoring the application, so they'll have an application performance management tool. Uh, developers, they care about um, code quality, they care about um, the, uh, you know, the actual crash performance or, or performance of the application, so they may have a, a crash analytics tool or a performance analytics tool. And then the QA team um, and, and the UX team, the user experience team, you know, they're very much keen on um, making sure that the, the uh, design of the application um, is, is easy to use and, you know, has a great user experience. So they may use some type of flow analysis tool um, in order to, um, to measure that. Now, oh, okay, here we have a, um, a defect that has been experienced uh, by the application. And unfortunately, what happens most in the wild is that the customer experiences the problem, and it's not detected by any one of these disparate tools. And um, because it takes a while uh, to, to detect it across disparate organizations, the customers have time to complain. You know, there's a lot of people that are impacted. Uh, you know, we see it. They get out on social media. They um, go to the public stores. They rate the application. Um, and then instantly, you know, hopefully somebody in the organization is at least monitoring uh, the sentiment uh, of the of the application, and a lot of times it's that you know that app, app owner that is you know very sensitive about negative reviews, which we should be, and so they use their tool to figure out what's going on, and they see oh wait a minute, there's a bunch of drop offs uh, detected in a particular experience or a particular flow, and then uh, you know they somehow communicate um, and talk to operations to say hey something's going on, you need to figure out what's going on. So they're researching, trying to figure out what the root cause is, and they look into their own tool. They don't really have any context. They just know, okay, about the time period that sentiment went bad, and so they can analyze the transactions. They can try to figure out uh, what's taking place. And then, you know, maybe it's a, a crash, and so we get the developers involved, and they look at error logs. Uh, and, you know, maybe it's something to do with people just dropping off because the user experience wasn't intuitive. They didn't know what they were doing. The problem is all of this takes time, and in the end, you know, you go from a minor issue where there's problems with the application to customers, because it takes so long to fix the issue, uh, customers ticked off and, and just leaving. And today, you know, it's so easy for people just to um, 
pick another application. Um, and actually, even you know, they're making decisions on switching financial institutions just because uh, one bank has a better mobile experience than the other. You know, ten years ago that was unheard of. Well, we didn't really do much banking mobile ten years ago, uh, and you know, we stuck with the bank that our dad took us to, and you know, we signed up our first uh, deposit slip, uh, signed up our first little book that we got. Uh, but now it's you know it's much more um, agile where people will change. Now let's look at it. You know if we were, if we actually had um, analytics correlated analytics across the entire user experience. The idea here is you know same same some same issue detected um, customers experiencing failures. Now if we have a centralized system that can analyze all the information and say wait a minute. Uh, we see a poor user experience. We can correlate that poor user experience to something that's happening at the application tier, um, or maybe it's a crash, and the crash is impacting you know more than one percent of our users, or whatever metric that you want to use. Um, we can quickly alert, and we can get to root cause of that failure and that bad experience, so that we can then resolve the issue, um, hopefully, before the customers get so ticked off uh, that they leave. Now, this is also, you know, an, ex an ability for you to earn customer loyalty. Now, customers know that you're going to have problems from time to time. It's how you handle those problems and how you react. So if you can provide a great experience and, and they can see, wait a minute, you know, they figured out very quickly that there was a problem. Uh, they resolve the problem, provide an update. Uh, you know, they maybe listen to my comments, or somehow they were reading my mind, figuring out what was going on. They provided a better user experience. That is the type of companies that you want to do more business with, and that you put up with uh, updating their applications. We all know that. You know, we go into our mobile device and we look at all the updates for our applications. It seems like you can never clear that list. Uh, you update. All your applications, I have like 100 on my stinking device. <laughs> I get them all updated, and I think, oh, slate clean. You know, one day later, you know, 30 more of them need, need updated. So in order for folks to be able to really feel like they're getting value, they want to see some change, some improvement in the user experience. So leveraging analytics, you know, most all organizations, this is kind of duh, um, you know, they are able to improve the retention of the customer um, by 15 to 35 percent. So it's very important, and you know, for for large customers, this is this is hundreds of thousands uh, of customers that they're able to retain and become more sticky uh, with those customers. Now, getting a a five star application is not a one time thing, and it's so public out there that from release to release, uh, we have to be very, very concerned about uh, our quality of our application and visibility into what's taking place. And you know, I'll, I'll go in and talk with customers, and I'll take a snapshot in time uh, of their current ratings, because you know, they're out there, very public. And you know, you'll have uh, a company that's focused a lot, of, a lot of effort, a lot of attention, and they have uh, like a 4.7 rating, which is great, out of five stars, 4.7 out of five. Um, and they've had that historically for the last two or three years. But then you look at the most current release, and for some reason there was a bug or there was an issue, and they're getting hammered. I mean, they go from a 4.7, and then they see you know, what comes up most relevant is the latest reviews. And if those are bad, you know, it looks like, you know, it doesn't matter what you did for me, you know, for the last two years. Your last release was bad. Uh, the, the negative, nasty comments are always f at the forefront. And this, is, this really impacts, uh, you know, a customer's brand, uh, impacts the reputation. You know, if you're looking, if you have customers that are, that are new, that are looking around, uh, and they see this review, you know, they're probably going to go to uh, someone that has a higher rating, even though you historically had a great uh, experience. So it's very important to, for this to be a continuous cycle. Like I said, you don't just get 4.7 stars, you drop the mic, you walk away and say, I have the best application ever. No, you need to continually improve 
uh, the experience. And there's always changes, right? Um, Android, Apple, Google, they're all changing uh, the, uh, the OSs of these devices. Uh, there's always changes in the browsers, and those can, you know, one deprecated API uh, or application interface um, can all of a sudden cause a, a negative experience where it was a great experience uh, in the past. So it's very important to continually improve uh, the experience. And, you know, we talked about uh, these, these silos. So we want to make sure that we are creating an environment that is a shared view uh, across uh, the different silos that I talked about previously. Uh, it's very important in order to have an alignment to say, okay, if we're going to be able to break down these barriers, if we're going to be able to provide, we need a tool or we need analytics that applies to all the different owners. Uh, you can't have just a tool that's heavy on the ops side because an app owner is not going to care about it or a UX person is not going to find the, the data flow or usage uh, experience that they need in order to do their job. And so they're going to go elsewhere. So you really need to be able to have this shared experience uh, that provides value uh, to all. And, you know, you're, you're answering these questions. Um, you know, if you have real user insights or real user monitoring, you can instantly tell what's really happening with the user, right? You know, not creepy or anything, but I kind of call this peeking over the shoulder of the customer. You want to be able to peek over the shoulder of the customer and see, oh, are they smiling? Are they frowning? Now, we're not using the camera to do that, but, you know, you can tell the sentiment uh, just by being able to monitor the user experience and see where they're running into performance issues or behavioral issues, drops, those types of things. So you want to make sure that you're understanding the experience. You want to understand the performance of the application behind the scenes. Um, you know, these front-end applications, web and mobile, they are calling, in most cases, you know, a variety of different application interfaces, so APIs. And any one of those being slow or not performant can cause a bad experience. Even if the application, the actual front-end application is running great, it looks pretty, it has great flow, if the performance behind the scenes is poor, you're going to run into problems. Now, especially if you have application crashes. If you have um, a crash in the application, uh, then, you know, you have, you're in real jeopardy of losing your customers. Nothing's more frustrating. You know, we all know it. We're doing something and all of a sudden, boom, it either, you know, we get a error code and we can't proceed uh, or we just exit out of the application. We have to go back in. In a lot of cases, you know, we were, we were trying to do something and we were maybe step seven of eight and it crashed and now we have to start back over. You, you can't do that to customers uh, too many times before they just up and leave and pick a different, uh, a different tool, a different company. And then you want to make sure that, you know, the entire flow, the entire business journey uh, is um, easy to navigate, uh, is providing the customers with what they want to see and, and interact the most. So you really want, you know, it, it's difficult, right? It's difficult to provide a, a single view um, or, or a collection of analytics that is correlated in order to satisfy all these different owners because they are all asking different questions. They all care about different things. That's where CA comes in. And, you know, our focus is really to help customers uh, gain that shared view. Uh, we want to be able to go to each one of those owners um, with a single experience and say, you know, here's metrics that we can track for you. Is that valuable to you? Uh, and, you know, we need sign-off from these different owners uh, of the different units. And once you provide value to all of them, then you're really going to get the adoption of the tool. You're going to be able to then align everyone to that goal of a great experience. And, you know, if you hear nothing, or if you, you know, remember nothing about this presentation today and you walk away with one thing, um, our focus is to help you provide a five-star application for experience. I've probably, said, I've probably said star, you know, 15 times already in this presentation. But it is so important to understand the experience of the customer. And, you know, we want them to promote our own software. We don't want to be pushing our own software 
nobody listens to us anyways, right? Well, yeah, obviously we have a jaded view. Uh, but if you can truly get five-star reviews, um, the sentiment of your experience is high, uh, that's where you're going to start growing the business and uh, really gain some stickiness uh, with, your, with your customers. The idea here is App Experience Analytics um, spans the different business units. So not only provides um, performance analytics uh, about the application, which you know operations people love, but it provides visibility into uh, code, uh, code-related issues, which developers love. Uh, it provides uh, entire user journey information, uh, which the app owner uh, cares about, and the UX specialist. They want to know the flows. They want to know where the customer experience is breaking down. So it's very important to be able to provide that, and that's really what uh, our CA App Experience Analytics tool provides. Uh, it's you know it's a very easy SaaS. We have both SaaS and on-premise offerings, and our customers uh, have great reviews for us about this application, and um, most all of them said that you know it improved their star rating, and that's a big deal, right? Uh, you know if we can if we can take our three and a half star application, and we can move it to a four, um, or even a four and a half, you know even just that half a yellow. Um, will be the deciding factor in a lot of cases between customers picking a three-star application or a 3.5 or a 3.2. Uh, so very valuable to customers because they are actually seeing improvements in the user experience. Now let me walk you through just a couple screens, a few screens of the application to kind of show you uh, what I'm talking about. Here, you know, you want to be able to monitor uh, the experience across multiple channels. This is just an overview screen uh, of the like the high-level view where you come into the application that's monitoring all of your mobile and, and web and wearable applications, and it provides this unified view that says, okay, you know, here's where you have particular usage in different regions. Um, you can, at a high level, you know, you can say, here's where I may have hotspots from a performance perspective or a design or usage perspective, uh, but you can really gain kind of a holistic view of what's taking place. And you can do it across multiple channels. That's the important thing is that we want to treat these dots not as individual dots, you know, you know there's not you know, a commercial going, I'm just a dot to my customer. No, you're not. You are an actual user. Uh, in most cases, you have a user ID. And uh, we want to track you as the user versus you as a dot on a mobile experience or a web experience, we want to tie those together. Uh, we want to know that, you know, um, Ashley uh, was working um, or trying to purchase something, uh, starting off using uh, the the mobile device, and uh, then transitioned from the mobile experience to the web experience, uh, completed the transaction on the web experience, and got a notification um, on her wearable that said, you know, order confirmed. Um, you know, that's a great omni-channel user experience. And if, it, if at any time that Ashley dropped off, um, whether it was in the middle of completing the transaction on the web and then picked it back up, we want to know that she picked it back up with context. Um, or when she transitioned from the mobile to the, to the uh, wearable or, or vice versa, that it was in context and it wasn't having to start over. It wasn't, you know, a new experience. It was actually picking up where you left off. So very important uh, to be able to monitor and see that. I like to talk about you know, designing the application with the customer in mind. So many times we are designing our applications with what we think the customers want. You know, you have to start there, right? Um, you typically will ask customers how they're using, what they want to do, those types of things. And so you'll come up, you'll be whiteboarding in a room, and you'll think, you know, this is the flow that most customers are going to, to leverage. Uh, this is the important uh, user journey. Uh, we want to make this the best user journey, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but in the end, your customers are going to tell you what they use the most. And with App Experience Analytics, it's going to be able to paint you a picture of that user journey. And it's going to be able to show you, okay, you know, a thousand people started on the main screen. Of those thousand people, um, you know, 500 went to screen A, um, 200 went to screen C. Uh, and then from those navigations, these are the 
you know, tasks that they try to accomplish. And then you can start seeing, you know, if I have, for example, on this screen, if I had a screen down in the bottom right-hand corner, and it was something that, you know, that is highly leveraged, where um, let's say it's something very important uh, for the users to do, and they do it quite often. Well, unfortunately, we buried it seven screens deep. Now, it's very easy to look at this information and say, okay, this is a popular screen, and then to next version, let's move that up in the user journey to make it easier. And this is where you start to be able to read the mind of your customers because they'll navigate through a flow and you know, it's kind of painful to go multiple screens. And you know, that's something they do a lot. You, you know that because of the analytics. And the instant you move that up a few screens, you have saved that user time, you saved them headache, and you're showing that you are actually understanding their user journey and improving uh, their user journey. So, you know, designing with the customer in mind is really using that analytics um, very powerfully and being able to provide a better user experience. Another example here that we show is uh, the App Experience Analytics actually tracking the clicks on the screen. Why is that important? Uh, this is great user experience information because we don't know where our customers think they should be clicking. Uh, and sometimes we will design things in the application uh, that customers think is clickable, like that image right there in the middle of the screen. It's a, it's a concert. You know, it's a party. People are, are having a good time. Uh, this is a ticket application. You want to be able to purchase tickets using this application, and people see the concert and think, hey, I want to purchase concert tickets. That's a concert. You know, why can't I just click on that? And you, you'll be presented with heat maps of where people are clicking on the application so that you can then adapt. Now, if there's something that's not clickable that, it, that you know, through the analytics, um, in App Experience Analytics, you see that a lot of people are clicking on, then, hey, why not make that a clickable icon? Uh, why not, or, or make it look less like something that is actually clickable. And then things that are heavily used, make it easier for them to click on um, the, the dots or click on the, uh, the options themselves. Uh, one, one customer example here is um, we work with a lot of financial institutions, and you know their digital experience is optimally important to them. They, you know, we actually. Um, a lot of times we will just take their Android application uh, off of the store, we'll wrap it, and we have this technique where we can just upload the APK, the actual uh, application, and we wrap it. And we insert analytics without even having to interact with the, the developer. And then we run the application uh, to kind of test the different experiences. And, uh, you know, one time in an executive briefing, I was, you know, we had already done this for the customer. Uh, without their involvement, and we showed them the results. And there was this, uh, on the main screen, the actual very first screen, they have multiple, you know, options to go to, and one of them is uh, find the nearest ATM. And the heat map showed that, you, that there was no clicking on the actual icon itself. The, the heavy clicking was just below the find, lo, the late, you know, the, the closest ATM, just below it. And uh, instantly, they were able to derive that that clickable image um, was off. And so customers weren't able to actually click directly on it. They had to click just below it. And uh, in the EBC, the executive got up and you know um, came up to the screen to analyze the information and instantly went back and started, started texting. And like, oh, you know, you know, don't email me for this presentation. I promise I'll give it to you at the end. Like, no, no, I am, I am emailing the app owner right now to fix this because this is like the number one feature that our customers use, and we didn't know this. Uh, and, you know, that's probably nothing that a customer is going to send a feedback. You know, they're probably not going to say, well, I was trying to click on this button, and I had to click below it. They're probably just going to say, you know, the user experience is crap, or they're going to say, you know, they're just going to either pick a different solution or uh, just generalize it as a bad experience. So that's one example of being able to design with the customer in mind and adapt uh, to those experiences. Obviously, you always want to know the impact 
so being able to provide the analytics that says, you know, here's the impact of users, it's 2% of your customer base, or sometimes, you know, Apple will do crazy things to us and depreciate an API that we were using, and it's 100% of all Apple users that are running the latest, you know, 15.7 operating system sometime in the future. You want to be able to analyze that so you know, okay, this is, this is something we need to get on very quickly um, and understanding exactly the user scenario uh, for those experiences. Now, performance is very important as well. And, uh, you know, this is where the operations people, um, they get the valuable information they need. They want to be able to walk through the journey and see if there's any slow-performing APIs, slow response times. Uh, they want to see the CPU usage of the device throughout the transaction. And App Experience Analytics makes it very easy for them to see um, exactly where the users were. We actually have representative screenshots. So you can see, and you actually play a video of the user experience. You can say, okay, um, you know, I'm, I'm running into a crash or I'm running into a performance issue. I want to see video playback of where those users are running into that poor experience. Uh, and they're able to do that with this solution. So very valuable to be able to, you know, really kind of peek over the shoulder of the customer and see if they're having any performance-related issues. From the end user perspective, it's probably just a spinny dial, uh, but it's a very frustrating spinny dial if it takes too long. And then, you know, you need end-to-end -end visibility. Now, I'm talking a lot about our our application experience analytics tool, which is the end user tool. Uh, I like to say that that is a, an outside in view. What do I mean by that? I mean that you're taking the outside perspective, the customer perspective, which surprise, surprise, Brian thinks is most important. But you're taking that outside perspective and you're able to say, okay, I, I have identified a problem. So I know um, what's going on. But then you need to be able to say, why is it happening? If it's not because of the actual end-user application, maybe it's a slow API um, that's being serviced by the application behind the scenes. So I need visibility into the application to know why. And maybe that application server is running on infrastructure that's in the cloud. Let's say it's an EC2 instance in uh, Amazon that is um, starved of resources, maybe it's running out of memory or whatever. Um, I then want to be able to correlate bad user experience, slow performance, to the application tier performance, to the infrastructure tier. And if I have that all correlated, it becomes very easy to get to root cause. And that's, you know, that's, that's the benefit of having correlation across all tiers and having um, the ability to tie it into more than just the end user experience tool. Now, you know, insights, customers can never get enough insights, and inevitably they want, they have a particular KPI, key performance indicator, that they care about, that uh, maybe not the rest of the world cares about or the rest of the customers care about. And so we provide a, uh, a tool. Now, you notice this, this uh, if any of you are familiar with Elastic, this is Kibana. Uh, behind the scenes, uh, we have an advanced analytics platform uh, that is leveraging open source technologies. Now, um, you know, open source isn't scary. It's actually um, great. There's, you know, especially the uh, the ones that have momentum have great communities behind them, uh, and you know, there's a lot of value in leveraging open source technology. And we have done that for our customers uh, with our advanced analytics platform. It's based on uh, a bunch of different open source technologies, such as Elasticsearch for our presentation layer. Uh, we're using um, Apache um, Spark for a um, ability to run jobs against um, the backend database or backend repository. Uh, we're leveraging a Kafka message bus. Uh, we've put it together a bunch of different great open source technologies and to provide a, a true analytics solution. And then uh, this is just a view that, you know, you can go in and run a Kibana dashboard report. We have some already built. But, you know, if you don't know how to run Kibana reports, you can just search it on the Internet. And there's, you know, hundreds of different videos because it's open source uh, technology that's being leveraged. Uh, it makes it nice for customers to really get to the data 
uh, get to the analytics and you know maybe create custom dashboards for particular business units that you know this this is the information that ops wants to wants and is very important they want in their network operations center uh, so they can look at all these red lights and green lights uh, whereas an app owner would you know they would want a different dashboard uh, they want to know conversions for the transactions or something like that uh, but being able to provide that uh, that customization is very important for our customers here's another view of you know, kind of what I've already talked about, so I won't spend much time here. But the important thing I do want you to understand is treating the user as the user versus individual channels. Uh, you know, mobile experience, wearable, browser, that somewhere behind those is a user. And we want to be able to link and be able to see where they're switching between channels and be able to correlate their experience uh, because even if you know if they're having a great mobile experience, who cares if they're having a terrible browser experience? That's still a ticked off user and somebody that we need to make sure that we address. Uh, why CA? Why the App Experience Analytics product? Uh, when I talk to customers, I, I find a, a big lack of, of visibility in one area or another. Everybody has a little bit of visibility around. Uh, but everybody can benefit from more visibility. Uh, and so when they see the visibility that App Experience Analytics provides, uh, that's really what opens their eyes and say, you know, that would add value to us. And yes, customers do still use other tools. Uh, you know, you're not, out of a marketing person, you're not going to rip, you know, Google Analytics, or you're not going to rip um, Omniture out of their hands because they're leveraging it for, you know, marketing specific uh, or um, managing or tracking specific marketing tags and so on. That's not, you know, we're not, we're not a marketing solution. Um, but working in conjunction to be able to enhance that information and provide better analytics, you know, anytime we can get more visibility, um, then it's definitely worthwhile. Now, Digital Experience Insights, or DXI, is the short name for it. It is the combination of multiple tools. Now, I've spent a lot of time talking about that left tile there, which is the app experience analytics piece, which is the end user monitoring. Um, I briefly touched on the other layers, but the importance here is that, you know, CA has a portfolio of products. And because we're leveraging a common analytics engine, we can correlate the data we can feed APM or application performance data into the backend analytics engine, and it's correlated to the experience. Uh, same thing for infrastructure data. We can take those alarms coming from the infrastructure and the metrics coming from the infrastructure, and we can correlate it to the application and the user experience. And this is just going to grow. Uh, right now we have three, three main products. Uh, we have a, a number of other products such as synthetic products, synthetic testing that we're going to be including. Uh, we're getting down to the uh, network layer with NetOps solutions. Uh, we have all of these in our portfolio. And the power is that they're actually not siloed. You know, we talk about not siloing our, our organizations. Uh, CA, uh, you know, it's a big push within our business unit is to not silo our products. And a way you not silo your products is you have a, a normalized, uh, analytics repository, um, a shared analytics solution. And so that's very important, uh, very exciting about what we're doing. And, you know, that just that provides that unified view. I've talked about this, but it's a span from experience to application to infrastructure to network and understand what's taking place. Here's just some screenshots of that. Uh, it's probably hard to see on the, uh, the WebEx. But these are... These are multiple, these are, you know, all screenshots from all three of the solutions, and you wouldn't know it. You know, it, it is meant to be and feel like the same application, but, you know, operations person, it, they want their, the information, the dashboard, the screen that makes most sense to them. They want to be able to easily link to other aspects, uh, but here you see that unified view across all different components of uh, the digital experience solution. This is just a little build up 
of the um, advanced analytics platform that I spoke to uh, earlier. Uh, we're feeding all of this data, this analytics, you know, data, we do a great job of collecting data, feeding all that into this uh, open elastic platform. I talked about, you know, a few of the open source technologies that we're leveraging. Um, the nice thing is, is we provide this to you, whether, you know, on-prem, so you don't have to worry about the fact that Elasticsearch, you know, just upgraded to a certain version, you know, whether it's compatible with Apache Spark or a pa compatible with uh, the Kafka that's being used, uh, we take care of that for you as one block. In SAS, obviously, you don't have to worry about it at all because we just take care of everything for you. Uh, and then leveraging that data uh, to provide operational intelligence um, and business insights. Now, we could have a completely separate discussion about what we're doing around AI ops, um, artificial intelligence operations. You know, I kind of call it the um, operations person in a box, uh, which is your digital assistant. Um, and we're doing a lot of great things around helping operations reduce the noise of alarms, do some capacity planning, uh, service monitoring, a bunch of great things there. Uh, but that's a separate discussion. Uh, stay tuned uh, for you. And then the business insights is that, that view of the information to provide uh, flow analysis to really help that business level person uh, to gain an understanding of how the application, you know, how their users um, are receiving the application and how to improve uh, the overall application. Now, hopefully something sparked. You know, there's still people on the line, so that's great. I appreciate you not all dropping off. Uh, but uh, I would encourage you, you know, if this sparked any interest, to have, you know, someone in your team or yourself try this out. It's very simple to get going. Uh, it's free. We, you know, we have a hosted uh, trial that's free that you can get up and going. Uh, you can, within minutes, you can sign up. Uh, you can just run the App Experience Analytics piece to start off with. Grab your Android application off of Google Play. Wrap it. You don't have to get the developers involved. Um, play around with it and just see out of the box all the metrics, all the valuable metrics that it provides. You'll be amazed. Uh, when we show it to customers, you know, they they don't believe that we didn't get, you know, any developer involved. Uh, you know, obviously we didn't, uh, but the amount of analytics that comes out of the box with this solution, uh, very, very valuable and very easy uh, to set up. All right, that is uh, my presentation. I've been talking for 44 minutes. Um, I'm going to pause now and see if there's any questions that I can answer, uh, anything you'd like me to elaborate on more, uh, feel free to post it in the chat. Let me see if I can see any, it looks like my chat is red, if I can find it. Okay. At this time, uh, should we open up the phone lines or how would we like to address questions? Thank you very much, Brian, for your great presentation. So, as you said, if you have any question for Brian, please use the Q&A box right in the WebEx. If you are on the phone line, please feel free to hit pound six to unmute your line and ask your question that way as well. We still have 15 minutes, so please go ahead. Don't be shy. Maybe everything was just perfectly clear, which is great. Now, <laughs> if you do have follow-up questions, um, you know, I'm a real person, Brian.Whitmarsh, so B-R-Y-A-N dot Whitmarsh, W-H-I-T-M-A-R-S-H at C-A dot com. Feel free uh, to send me uh, an email, ask any questions. Brian, uh, we, we have, have some... a question in the yep. chat box. Can you talk so, about Proactive alerting for AXA. Yeah, so there's two questions I see. Uh, first one is around proactive alerting uh, for, for AXA. What we have is an area in a App Experience Analytics uh, that you set up uh, a number of different alerts. And this is where you want to proactively know if, for example, uh, a number of X number of crashes uh, is happening. You want to be able to, to be alerted of, okay, you know, if it reaches more than, you know, 
one percent of my users, or um, even you know, a lot of people just want to know about every single crash. Be alerted you now. Uh, so you can set up that alerting. You can do it on a on an individual performance basis of an API. You know, sometimes we'll have those problematic APIs. In a lot of cases, it's a third API, third party API. We have no control over, but we um, it's been a problem. So we want to know ahead of time, um, in real time, if that API uh, is causing problems. Now, the challenge here is that you know real end user monitoring is the real users actually interacting with the application. And so to be more proactive, uh, we like to sprinkle in synthetics. And CA has a bunch of different uh, synthetic solutions. Um, for example, our RunScope solution that we are now just integrating into the overall DXI solution. It allows you to synthetically monitor individual APIs. And for you know our big customers like CNN and Fox News, they, they want to know when anything happens with any API, because one API broken or slow can spoil the whole user experience. And you know you have the opportunity with synthetics to capture that and to understand that before a user may hit it. Uh, and a lot of times we'll have you know an API that's rarely used but is very very important. You know maybe it's something where your confirmation of um, setting up. Uh, routing numbers for your for your bank account to tie it to your credit card or whatever. It's rarely used, but you you know when it goes bad, you know customers are ticked um, and they're nervous because they're like, oh, what happened to that data? Uh, and so being able to monitor that proactively, uh, leveraging both synthetics and real time uh, is is a great uh, trio, if you will, of a solution. We have some questions around you know how do you correlate uh, APA? How do you correlate this data? Uh, we have this, what is actually called a correlation ID, um, and the solutions that are a part of Digital Experience Insights, uh, they pass this correlation ID across the experiences. And so we can, for example, when um, App Experience Analytics, you know, you have a session, uh, we get a correlation ID, and then we pass that correlation ID to APM. And APM then, has you know in the repository we have that same stamp same thing for um, the IM information um, we are passing the correlation information and also you know from IM perspective we can leverage um, the time frame perspective so everything is time series data and we can see that you know when you are in um, a view for example a map of the application you can easily switch between um, the application view and the infrastructure view to see the correlation between the application tier, you know, the application vertices, or you know, the little boxes that represent the services of the application, then you flip it, and we see the correlated infrastructure that is tied, that is supporting that, and the IM information is fed into that uh, analytics engine so that we can see that you know is there a little red dot because there's an alarm going off on this EC2 instance that is supporting you know, say, for the 10 services within the application. So it's all built in, and we're leveraging correlation IDs behind the scenes. We're leveraging time series data. We also, um, the the analytics part of it, we didn't even get into much, uh, but we have um, machine learning algorithms, advanced algorithms that are looking at all of this data and being able to provide insights to customers, such as our, um, our service analytics, uh, being able to, Look at individual services and know, you know, it's doing the thinking for you and correlating it for you, saying, okay, you know, this time period bad app performance tied to directly tied to an issue with the infrastructure that the um, the infra uh, infrastructure management tool is is providing. So that's done uh, done for you, kind of like when I talked about the operations person in a box. Uh, example: HTTP errors, response times, SLA violations. Uh, yes. We're collecting all of the um, HTTP errors. Uh, you can, you know, sort by the um, most common errors. You can then look, and you know, you can drill from a very high level. Start from a very high level to say, I'm getting this error code the most. Uh, drill into the individual APIs that are kicking out that error. Drill down into the actual sessions of the users that are experiencing that. Uh, you can even replay the session to see. Uh, so uh, very detailed. Um, error analysis. Uh, from an SLA perspective, 
Uh, I love to use synthetics uh, for the SLA uh, validation because I like to say, you know, I'm going to test this third-party system or this system every five minutes. And I want to look over historically and say, was this up? Was it performing at the right, you know, less than 200 milliseconds? Or, you know, was it performing where it meets my SLA? And was it returning the right kind of data? So I loved using synthetics for that, such as RunScope and others. Um, but those are solutions that um, are all being tied into digital experience insights. Obviously, uh, we're going to provide, um, from an end-user perspective, uh, the SLA metrics, but if you want to truly know what's happening every minute of every day um, in different geographic regions, you know, maybe it's slower in Germany, we need to know about that, then synthetics are a great tool uh, for that. All right, I don't see any other questions. I appreciate people writing some questions, so I had something to talk about. Um, but I hope this was a, a very valuable session. Uh, it's being recorded, so it can be played back if you want you know, if your colleagues are having a hard time sleeping at night and they need something to listen to, they can listen to my voice. Uh, but other than that, I hope uh, this was valuable for you. I'll give you seven minutes back uh, in your day, but I uh, greatly appreciate uh, you joining us. And uh, like I said, you know, look for the other webinars. Um, you know, hopefully some things I talked about sparked your interest around our advanced analytics, our digital operation intelligence, uh, a lot of the cool things that are coming out. Uh, but again, thank you very much for your time, and have an excellent day. Thank you very much, Brian, and thank you to all our attendees. Have a great day. Bye-bye.